Weather like this needs a hat like this. Today's very timely project. Our cap has five main pattern pieces. The top, which I'll use just one piece of fleece. The visor, which is a piece of our main body fleece and Sherpa. I'm using that textured Sherpa fleece. The ear flap, which is the main body, which will in this case is going to be the red and black uh, buffalo check plaid. And then on the inside, we're going to put that Sherpa. We have a cuff that we will fold in half. And then the outside body piece, slightly rounded at the top edges where it joins our top. If you don't want to round those edges, you don't have to. You can just go straight up. Maybe just cut your top. There's a, on our website, when you download the top, there's a little gray shadow all around the edge, which is meant for a half inch um, seam width because I do a three eighths or one centimeter seam width but you could just cut out at that shadow on the outside of that shadow to make up the extra that you'll need if you just decide to do this shape as a, as a rectangle instead of rounding this. I just like to round it a bit to draw in the top a little bit more and give that top shape a little bit more definition. There is my hat and I have done mine with a, a solid black band on the outside just for some contrast. You can use any fabric for this because there's a lot of sewing. It doesn't really need to be super, super stretchy, but if you're gonna use wool, um, I would recommend that you line it with a fleece just for comfort. And also you could cut the wool on the bias so it's a little bit more stretchy, gives a bit more. But all of the inside, I would recommend using something that is fleece related so that it's just comfortable and you won't feel itchy, but you can definitely use uh, woolen fabrics, plaids, whatever you would like on the outside of your hat. I would say that if you're going to line the inside with a fleece that you should maybe do the top in the solid fleece as well, just because that will give you a little bit more give as you're working it in to the, up, the top edge of your band. Now, one thing that we have done or are in the process of doing is we do have quite a few um, quite a lot of fabric in our inventory including the Sherpa and I know it's kind of hard to find so we will have some some kits available on our website if you prefer you can just buy all the pieces that you need right from us including the tie and the toggle the um, extra firm stabilizer for the visor and there's actually a generous amount of everything in here. All right, so that will be, there'll be a link for that in the description as well. Here are my pieces. And I'm going to lay them out. All right, this is my cuff. take it a little bit longer and this is actually the same as what you would get in that box that kit and included in the kit is a piece of solid black lamb skin fleece nice and soft and cozy and we're going to put right sides together so we're going to cut two pieces for our band take this right down to the edge you're gonna cut your band and your cuff pieces to be larger than the diameter of your or the circumference of your head sorry so uh, my head is an average 22 and a half inch and my uh, pieces here are about 23 and a half inch so I'm giving myself an extra inch for comfort and to uh, 
my for my seam allowance and you just need to do one piece for the top i think a lot of people find hats are quite hot in the winter and it's really your ears and keeping your face and your glasses dry that is my priority anyway whoops i'm too close to the edge there so um if you want to though you could cut out a double layer and when you do that dart you just put the two wrong it, uh, sides together and sew them together before uh, right at the edge before you actually sew the top onto your hat body you might want to cut the hat out the hat top out just a little bit bigger because it won't be quite as stretchy as it is with a single layer as you can see I've reused this top a number of times particular weight paper that you would have in your computer printer is uh, quite sturdy so we've got our top we've got our our band and we've got our cuff and so now we're going to do our ear flaps and our visor we're going to use a piece of Sherpa fur as the other side of our ear flaps and there you'll see the shadow of the line that you would cut at the edge of if you take a larger seam allowance than I do. I use a three eighths of an inch seam allowance or one centimeter, but that line is there to help you cut out a slightly larger piece. And these notches at the bottom of the ear flap are where you will uh, insert the end of your your drawstring so I'll just cut a little notch there just so I know when I'm sewing around the outside and this is the back of your head so it comes down over the back of your neck and into the back of your coat little bit of a slope there but you can cut it straight a across if you're just you prefer to just draft your own pattern all right so there is our ear flop right sides together we have our plaid on the outside and our sherpa on the inside and now all that's left is to cut our visor so i'm going to cut my visor on a diagonal I've outlined my visor pattern onto my extra firm stabilizer and I have positioned it onto a diagonal on the wrong side of the outside layer of the top piece of my visor and I'm going to pin it in place and then I'm going to sew on that line all the way around the entire visor sewing the stabilizer to the back of the fleece and creating an outline in the thread on the other side and I'll then put this together with my black Sherpa piece which will be the underside of my visor. I have positioned this on the diagonal because I like the way that the check looks on a diagonal on a visor top up against the up and down direction of the check pattern when it's sewn to the cuff piece. So you can see the outline that I'm making and you can see it on the underside or on the right side as well. And now I'm gonna pin my right sides together with the Sherpa part of my visor and I'm going to sew just on that outside curve and I'm going to sew them all the way through all those layers together and I'm going to leave the inside of my visor curve open for now. So there you can see once I've sewn them all together I'm going to trim away that extra fabric from just beside that marker and thread line and using that as my guide for the new visor outer edge. So now that I finished trimming, I'm gonna use my regular seam width of about 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter and sew that outside curve again through all the layers. And you can clip at the curve, but I prefer to finish that edge with a serge. And I find that helps to compress the layers together and gives me a nice, clean, smooth, crisp curve on the right side. And I can also use that serge surged edge as something to manipulate back and forth between my fingers to flatten that seam as I work the bottom and the top layers to be even on each side of the seam. It works every time folks. I have a nice smooth curve on all of my visors because of this technique. 
But if you don't have a serger, that's fine. You'll see that this extra sewing that we did to put these layers together is going to give you a nice curve too. So now I'm going to pin this in place and I'm going to sew that inside curve closed now and then I'll trim away the extra fabric on the right side of that sewing line. And when I finish, I'll just trim off those two pointing ends and I will remove my clips and my pins and I will do a lovely decorative top stitch. It's about a half an inch in from the edge of the seam and I'm using my magnet guide to help me or 12 and a half millimeters. And then I'll fold the visor in half and I will just cut a little notch to mark the center of the visor, which will also be the center of the front of our cap. So matching up that pattern of the checks, I'm gonna stick a pin in the back seam there, just on the one side. And I'll use my regular seam width of 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And I'm gonna sew those two edges of the back together. I'll open it up and I will just lay those two raw edges flat and top stitch them down so that I have a nice flat back seam in my cuff. And just sewing stitch on either side of that seam up one side and back down the other. And I do a lot of top stitching, especially on back seams, because I find that it just makes the hats fit better and they fit more comfortably. You don't feel anything at the back of your head. So I'm going to just make my cuff folded now and I will sew those two raw edges, the long ends together all the way around. And that part of the cuff, the part I'm, I'm sewing right now is going to be hidden in my final closing seam when I attach this piece which is gonna get attached to the visor to the other piece, which will be the cap body and the ear flap. And it's magic the way it goes together, folks. You'll love it. We'll make a few other hats like this too, using this technique. So stay tuned. So I, I'm just pinning the raw edge of my cuff I've decided which side was going to be the, the right side on the outside. So I've got my right sides together and I'm just sewing uh, very close to the edge, the cuff to the inside curve of the visor. And you can see it's shaping up nicely. And now we're going to work on the other part of our cap. So this is a uh, two parts for our hat band that goes around our head. One is on the outside and that's the print, the buffalo check plaid, and the solid black piece will be my lining. And I've cut a little bit of a curve at the top there just to ease in the top nicely. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the back seams as I did to the back seam of my cuff. So my regular seam width of 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And I will also do the dart of my top while I've got my magnet there. I'll cut those notches though to mark the center of the front and the seams will be my back center. So I folded my top in half and I'm going to start at the center of the top and sew down to the edge with my regular width seam, 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter. Cut a center notch while I have it folded and now I'm gonna go up and down to make a beautiful flat top stitch, which will look nice on both sides. So I'm gonna go up one side of that dart and with my needle in the, in the fabric, I'm gonna pivot and come along back down on the other side. And you hardly notice it, but it gives your top a beautiful rounded uh, shape, which is uh, matching the shape of our rounded top heads. And now I'm gonna to top stitch the back seams of my bands before I put them together. Now the bands, we're gonna just sew the two pieces together. So wrong sides together 
We're gonna match those uh, back seams and the and the notches that we created at the front, and we're just gonna sew close to the edge on both edges, on the top and the bottom edge, all the way around. We're just gonna put those two pieces together so there's a right side on both sides. So now we're going to match our back seam with the dart on the top. So right sides together, we'll clip or pin at our dart and our back seam and our center front notches. And then we're gonna ease in the top all the way around, just clipping or pinning if we have to, just to make sure that the fit is pretty accurate. And if it's not, if you find that your top is way too big, then this is a good time just to trim a little bit off. Or if it's way too small, then this is a good time to just put those bands around your head and make sure that they're not the problem. And if they're the problem, if you have enough fabric, then hopefully you can cut another piece for your top, just a little bit bigger. And I'm using my regular seam width. I've just gone around and I'll just overlap my seam instead of going um, back and forth. So I'll just sew beyond where I started by about a, you know, a centimeter or two centimeters or an inch. Now we're gonna do our little magic and that is what we do with all of our winter fleece hats. We're going to sew a top stitch, a literal top stitch. We're gonna sew a seam that goes all the way around, a row of a line of sewing all the way around, just right beside the seam that we just made when we joined the top and the band together. And I'm using the left side of my needle as, or the left, sorry, the left side of my foot as my um, seam guide. And I'm just sort of resting it against that raw edge of fabric that wants to naturally stick up when I pull on both sides to make sure that my fabric is flat as my needle comes around. And that's what it should look like. And you can do this on the other side as well. If you find that it's just easier for you to feel the, the fabric on one side of your, of your presser foot, then by all means do it from the right side. And I finished off the inside with a serge. You don't have to, you'll see that the pressure is off of that top seam just by the way we did it. But I like to finish my inside seams with a serge because I am still in business and I will probably sell some of these types of hats. So now we're in the fun stage. We're going to put together our ear flap band. And I cut that little notch at the beginning just to show where my drawstring was going to come. So I've just sandwiched the drawstring in between the, the right sides of my um, ear flaps. So I've got right sides together. I'm looking at the wrong side of the black and red buffalo check fabric and the wrong side of the Sherpa is on the bottom of my sewing machine table. And I'm just gonna go back and forth, back and forth, close to the edge, just to give that drawstring a little bit more strength because it will get pulled on. But I will come around again and sew over top of it as I sew all along that seam to sew those two layers of fabric together. And I've also put my um, toggle on the cord. You don't have to do that. You can wait till the very end, but I have a hook tool. And if you order um, the kit from us, you'll find that the, the toggle will be on the cord just like that, which makes it easier for you to finish off your hat with a toggle because there's nothing more frustrating than trying to get a thick cord through a small toggle hole. So using my regular seam width, I'm going all the way around that outer edge, leaving the top open. And again, you can clip the curves if you want to with your scissors. I'm going to go over to my serger and I'm going to serge that whole um, seam that I just made so that I can just compress all those raw edges of fabric and the, and the toggle string sticking out. And it's a nice 
smooth flat edge for me to turn right side out and make a nice smooth lovely flat um, perfectly turned right side out piece where my seam is centered in between the outside piece of fabric and the inside piece of fabric but because the Sherpa has a lot more texture than my fleece, you'll see the little knobs of Sherpa sticking out, which I think is really fun and looks nice. So I'm gonna close that um, top edge now that I just used to turn my piece right side out. I'll just sew very close to the edge of the seam. And then once I've done that, I'll reset my magnet and I will do a top stitch that's about the same as the one that I did on the edge of my visor, about a half inch or 12 and a half millimeters. And just go carefully around and hold up my string as I go uh, around that corner so that I don't get my drawstring caught in my top stitching. and I'll give you a better close-up shot of what I mean as I come to the other ear flap. And there you go, you can see what I'm doing there, just protecting my drawstring. Now I'm cutting a notch and this is the center back. The ear flap is the back of the hat that comes around the back of your head and that little cuff goes down into the back of your coat. And to sew it on to the body, we're gonna put the wrong sides together. So now our seam that joins these two pieces together is gonna be on the right side or the outside of the hat. But guess what? We're gonna cover it up with our cuff. Tricky, right? So I'm just pinning it on so that it's pretty evenly spaced. And I just have to sew close to the edge once again. And this is why we can use something that's not fleece to make this hat because there is, as you can see, a lot of sewing. Fleece is nice to work with though. It feels nice on your hands, but there's lots of sewing in this hat and we've cut it big to take into account that. So we're gonna put the two pieces together now, our cuff with our visor and our hat body with our ear flap. And we're gonna start at the front. So we're gonna put the wrong sides together and what you see here is I'm just showing you how when we finish, our cup's gonna come up and it's gonna completely cover all that sewing that we've made to join all those pieces together. And you're gonna see that this is a pretty thick bunch of fabric to try to get through your sewing machine. So if you have a problem and your sewing machine just can't handle it, you could just pin it together and just hand sew it like the old fashioned way, and it'll look fantastic either way. But hopefully you got at least this far with your sewing equipment. Now I have an industrial machine, a Jack industrial machine, and I love it because it will cut my thread for me automatically too with a step of a little extra pedal. Um, but uh, I know that a lot of you probably don't have industrial equipment. Some of you might. So this is a big push for a machine to get all this fabric through. So I'm hoping that most of you will be able to do it without having to resort to hand sewing, but this is the last step. So you see, I'm just working the pieces in together all the way around. And they're both have their stretchiness restricted. Uh, the, the, the piece that has our ear flap is restricted uh, by that addition of an ear flap halfway around and the same with the cuff that has the visor. So it's just a matter of working them in so that they will be evenly spaced as you make your seam all the way around to join them. And you can pull on them slightly to do that as you're sewing as well. So 
So the next hat that we make using this technique will be a cap that's more of a fashion cap with a, a pom-pom on top and it won't have this Sherpa fleece which makes this piece so much thicker to sew. So if you can sew this then probably you're going to be able to sew anything I throw at you on this channel. So it's looking pretty good. The pieces seem to be fairly well matched. And so now I'm going to sew um, a, with my regular width seam, but it's got to be wide enough to pick up all of that um, sewing that I've done close to the edge because I want that all to be covered now inside my cuff. And I'm taking my time as I go around. There's no need to rush. We want it to just turn out perfect. We don't really want to spend a lot of time with our seam ripper. But even people who've been sewing for 36 years like me spend time every day with their seam ripper. So do, so do not despair if you have to do that. Now we just flip that cuff over and look at that. Voila, we just have to take our cord and figure out how long we want it to be. Give it a trim and then knot each end so that the ends don't come through the toggle. And I'm using a um, cotton uh, drawstring cord. I'll put the um, information about the toggle and the cord in the description, along with all the pattern piece measurements as well. But you can get the pieces from our website. There'll be a link there for the ear flap. Um, all the pieces will be in size medium. Sewing pattern as well that will have a booklet and um, all these pieces graded for three adult sizes. So when that's available, the link will be in the description as well. If you have questions or comments, you know what to do. Leave them below and I do answer you. I will answer you as quickly as I can. I am still working, so some days I'm not as quick to the computer as others. You can wear those ear flaps up. You can wear them down. You can have that cord just sort of hanging down your back and your ear flaps are sort of gently framing your face. I just love this hat. And now I'm going to get Adrian to show you how much he loves it too. Here's our little male model showing us how we can use our toggle to keep those flaps close to the head, close to your ears. Nice and cozy and warm. If you feel like you don't need to be so cozy and warm, but you want to wear your hat, you can put those flaps up. The old Elmer Fudd look or Canada cap, trapper hat, I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay hat. Thank you so much for watching everyone. This has been a terrific first year for our channel. We're having so much fun. Adrian's gonna go now keep plowing our driveway so we can get out after this blizzard. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. We have lots and lots of projects ahead to share with you. We also have super thanks now. So if you feel like the free distribution of patterns, something you could support, we would appreciate any small donation. So see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.